To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. Now I'm aware, we're all aware, of circumstances where in our public schools, uh, students are disciplined for speaking out against homosexuality there on the schools. Now the precepts behind that discipline was to prevent bullying and a recognition of the suicide rates among gay teens. Now, this has caused a response from the theists, and in a couple states, laws have already been passed, and they name them all kinds of fancy things like uh, Freedom of Religion Protection Act, that basically says a, kid, a, a young person cannot be disciplined for speaking out against homosexuality. At the time, I spoke out against it because, you know, I value our Constitution. I value freedom of religion so far, though I don't agree with religion. And I value freedom of speech. I believe that open discourse is necessary because minds cannot be changed one way or the other by censorship. But somebody brought up a good point brought up a good point to me that has me reconsidering my stand, and that's this. The purpose of our schools and the purpose of education is to educate our teens, is to educate our young people and prepare them for life. And stated that speaking out against gay teens in the school is actually designed to hurt. And maybe he's correct. And regardless of whether or not that's the intent, that is the product. We talk about the suicide rate among gay teens, and many theists turn around and say, well, they're doing that because homosexuality is unnatural, it's a disease, and it's a sin, and they can't live with themselves so therefore the fault of that is on homosexuality. But, imagine if you will, that every time you got up in the morning and walked out your door, you went to a place that was hostile to you, maybe because you had brown hair, maybe because of the color of your skin, maybe even because of your religious beliefs. And everywhere you went, every day, at least once a day, and maybe many times in a day, you got told or heard that you were a sick deviant, unnatural byproduct of the human race. God has cursed you. You're living in sin. You're going to hell. Have any of you even thought to consider how that might be affecting your neighbor? Was Zacchaeus converted by Jesus because Jesus looked up in that tree and said, You're a thief? Actually, no, Zacchaeus was converted and brought to Jesus because Jesus looked up at him and smiled and said, Come down from there. I'm coming to your house to dine tonight. So I guess my question, my real question is this. I'm revisiting this issue. I'm still up, uh, up at arms about it. But my question to theists is this. Why do you feel that you need the right for your teenage son or daughter to speak out against homosexuality in the school. Is that truly a time to keep silence or a time to speak? Because nobody's telling you that you can't speak. Westboro Baptist Church is a perfect 
example of that. And I'm not saying you're all like Westboro Baptist Church, but what I am saying is they said and present the most hateful, perverse message that even most of you don't agree with, but yet nobody is telling them that they cannot speak. The courts and the law are telling them that they cannot present that message. By disciplining the kids who speak out against homosexuality in the school, what they are saying is you can't bully. That this is not the time. So I guess my question is, again, why is it necessary that in the halls of an institution designed to educate young people, is it necessary to speak out against homosexuality there? Is that really the time and why? I would also like to ask this as a little side note. Let's assume that you are correct. Science does not back you up, but let's assume that you are correct that homosexuality is unnatural. Let's assume that you are correct in saying that homosexuality is a disease. Do we bully our diseased people? Do we make fun of an epileptic? Do we allow somebody to make fun of an epileptic because they go into a seizure in the public school system? If it is in fact a disease as you believe that it is, many of you do believe that it is, is it not equally immoral to put down and condemn somebody for having a disease, if be it homosexuality or uh, epilepsy? I'm not saying that I agree with you that it's a disease, but if that's what you believe that it is, by what right would you have to condemn, put down, or belittle somebody who is ill? So those are my two questions. Number one, why do you feel that school is the proper time and place to speak your message? And number two, if you believe they are sick, we are sick and ill, by what right do you have to belittle us? Please leave your comments below. Thank you. Actually, I came up with another question here. Something else popped in my head. I didn't get it out on, on, on uh, the first recording. So let's throw this in here too. Why do these religious protection acts dealing with our public schools come about in the light of young people being disciplined for speaking out against homosexuality? Why didn't it come about in regards to creation versus evolution? Why didn't it come about in schools putting rock and roll music during the lunch hour over their intercoms? Why is it that homosexuality brought about this legislation? If you could answer that question too, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. The thoughts keep coming, so here's recording number three. Have you stopped to consider that there are actually religions who believe that the black skin is the mark of Cain or that the black skin is the mark of the sin uh, I believe the Mormons believe this and I believe there are others or at least have at one time who actually believed that the color of, of black that people who are black skin are ancestors of those who rebelled against God so have you stopped to consider that the religious freedom protection acts may actually serve to protect racial discrimination because all it takes is for one young person to say to the principal in school well yeah I called him racial slurs but that's my religious beliefs because it's my religious beliefs he bears the mark of Cain 